All right, good evening, class, and welcome to week number one. That is right, week number one in March, but still week number one of your 9449 class, which is your uh, Bi Services for Business Communities class. And as always, I'm your professor, Dr. J.S.K. Austin, and what we are going to do today is we are going to do our, well, our uh, introduction, which is going to be a syllabus overview, uh, also talking about the assignments and some other things about the course. We're going to do that. We are going to um, um, we're going to do all of that just so that uh, you have a better understanding of this course, what's going to be expected of you. Um, this should hopefully also just uh, ease a little anxiety if you haven't had me before or you're not sure how this course is going to go, uh, especially if you don't have a business background. That can be kind of unnerving, but don't worry. I am here for you. We are going to be OK. And the reason, again, that I am doing this first lecture uh, or this first check in video. Uh, sorry, I do call these check in videos. The reason why I do this first check in video is a syllabus over overview slash course overview is because yes uh, students do tend to do a little better when they just um they're not just looking my students i should say when they're not just looking at a canvas course and wondering okay what do i do and then what do i do and then what do i do they do want to kind of feel out the instructor and so these check-in videos will help you fit, uh, fill me out fill out the instructor um so that is why we are going to do them so let's go ahead and jump right in let me pause for a second and actually first things first uh if you have not sped me up already as you probably have already noticed i speak very slowly i'm from the south and we are slow speaking people so if you ever want to speed up one of my videos which i recommend you do you can speed them up usually to 1.5 uh possibly even 1.75 while still hearing and understanding everything that I say. So I'm going to show you exactly how to speed me up. Uh, so if you do ever want to speed me up, here is how you would do it. And I recommend you speed me up for any video that I record that you are watching. So, all right, so what you're hearing, actually, I'm all. So that's the normal pace, right? Now, now, that was the normal pace, right? So again, you had that. If you ever want to speed it up, you can come here to this little widget thing right here. Go to playback speed. And again, if you speed it up to 1.5, watch how the music gets faster. See, that's some Conway West stuff right there. And I'm talking about saying Conway West before he really did it on the beat Or was Kanye West ever saying? Who knows? Okay, so that is how you speed up a video. Again, you can go to this little widget here, go to playback speed. And again, usually you can speed me up to 1.5 or 1.75 and still understand everything I'm saying. Check-in videos, however, are all optional. Um, two might be a little too fast. So I would, again, recommend 1.5. 1.25 1.75 so there you go so that is how you speed up one of these youtube videos and i do upload these to youtube because youtube is a auto caption service and so uh for my students who may need to read captions just the captions are incorrect at times but um this is the best tool that i have to work with um as far as generating captions for students who need them now if i do have a student who actually files a disability as accommodation request then I'll have to do something different as far as scripting my videos. But apparently what I've been told is I don't have to do that unless and until I actually uh, get some sort of request from the accommodations office. So, uh, well, from the uh, Office of Disabilities. So having said that, um, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and look at this course syllabus. And by the way, for those of you who have not had me before, for better or for worse, I am not really this uh, formal uptight professor. Um, and uh, in the business class, that can be a little bit of a challenge. People like that when we're talking about reference and we're talking about uh, cultural heritage and some of these other classes I teach. But when it comes to the business class, yes, I'm still informal and it doesn't always job with people. But again, I'm just going to be me. Um, if you prefer a formal professor, all I can say is, sorry, you're not getting that here. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you are in ISIL 4. 
9449, sorry, ISL 9449, Services to Business Communities, uh, Spring 2023. The first thing you do need to know, because most of you have actually had me in a class before, and if you've had me in a class before, you know that I generally have uh, sync sessions with guest speakers. That's for the 16-week classes that I teach, though. It's not really, or 15-week classes. I don't really do that for my eight-week classes. So you are in an eight-week class right now, and this class is completely asynchronous. You do not have any sync sessions to attend, okay? Now, if you all do want to have, like, a, a sync session where you all just have, like, maybe a happy hour or a gathering or something, let me know. I'm more than happy to put something like that on so that you all can meet your classmates and kind of network that way because you do need to make some friends while you are at the student level. But again, there are no required sync sessions in this class. This class, unlike my 15 week classes, is completely asynchronous. So what is this class about? Well, this, cl this course is organized into the core uh, business information categories. These units are devoted to the basic concepts, resources, and services of business information. These units also cover some of the major techniques used in addressing specific business information needs, such as finding company information, industry information, investment information, statistical information, and marketing information, etc., etc. After completing this course, students should have an enhanced familiarity with business resources, a better understanding of the job duties, and necessary skill sets of business librarians and resources to consult if they wish to pursue business librarianship as a career. Now, uh, please note, in the interest of improving learning, the instructor does reserve the right to make changes to the syllabus or tweak the course while it is in flight. Changes, if any, will be minimal, and they will always favor the student in terms of time. Please exercise flexibility. So now, again, who am I? I am Dr. Jace, uh, and this is, you can call me just Dr. Jace, or you can call me Jason, or Dr. Austin, or whatever. Uh, I respond to a multitude of things. You can email me at austinj at missouri.edu, any place, anytime, any town. My office phone number is 816-235-1875. However, email is the best way to reach me. We can do office hours by appointment if you want. And my office location is actually not in Columbia. It is in Kansas City. My office is 122B Miller Nichols Library on the campus of UMKC. All right. Um, give me one moment here. All right. So, um, and by the way, one other thing that I did fail to mention back then was... Um, we don't have to do office hours physically in my office. I'm sorry. We can do office hours by Zoom because probably almost none of you, I know at least one or two of you are in the Metro Kansas City area, but most of you are not. So I apologize if I gave the impression that office hours had to be done physically. They can be done through Zoom as well. Okay. Uh, course overview, business librarianship utilizes a special and specific skill set that many librarians just do not have, especially if they do not have business backgrounds themselves. Now, one thing that I do want you all to keep in mind is that most business librarians do not actually have business degrees, believe it or not, okay? Um, <clears throat> and most librarians, even business librarians, do not. Even those who do not wish to be business librarians should have a working knowledge of business reference resources, as libraries are uh, common places for these type of inquiries. Taking this course will start you on your journey toward competency in business reference and knowing what it takes to be a business librarian. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. All right, student learning outcomes. So uh, we have a list of student learning outcomes and you can follow that link for those, but this course will work with two of the student learning outcomes. Uh, graduates will be competent in information organization and uh, life cycle, uh, excuse me, this is uh, student learning outcome number three and life cycle activities, uh, techniques of organization of information and with using and evaluating technologies for uh, technologies of the information profession. So this is really what we're focused on here when it comes to sl uh, slow three or student learning outcome number three is you will have, and we'll talk about these in a second, worksheets that help you get more familiar with the various uh, business uh, library technologies. In this case, they are going to be databases. And then also graduates will be able to assess community needs, formulate plans to respond to users of information agencies, and to instruct users in using informational resources. And this is what your business plan will address. So your worksheets um, that you do, they operate in order to address slow three, and then your business plan that you will be working on with your partners that addresses slow number four. 
Uh, technical resources. I'm going to go through this kind of quick because this is the same stuff really that you're getting in all of your classes. Um, if you have difficulty logging into a course, uh, contact 573-882-5000 or tech support at missouri.edu. I'm assuming that if you would have had difficulty uh, logging into the course, you would not be listening to me right now. Library uh, resources and e-resources. Make sure that you know how to get to our library. Uh, the electronic reserve system is eres.missouri.edu. But just know to get to Mizzou's library, it's library.missouri.edu. Okay, technical help. If you need this uh, type of tech support, contact the help desk, helpdesk at missouri.edu or 573-882-5000. And there is a toll-free number, 866-241-5619. Okay, online class netiquette. And this is something I have to pay attention to, uh, to as well, y'all. Believe me, this is something that I have to pay attention to just as much as you all do. So, uh, your instructor and fellow students wish to foster a safe online learning environment. All opinions and experiences, no matter how different or controversial they may be perceived, must be uh, respected in uh, in the tolerant spirit of academic discourse. You are encouraged to comment, question, or critique an idea, but please do not attack individuals. And this, in this, in a class like this, there's not even going to be a whole lot of controversial posting or anything in the discussion boards anyway. At least I don't think so. Now, I say that and then somebody <laughs> might actually uh, rock the boat a little bit, but uh, for the most part, this is not a class where you're going to be encountering a lot of controversial stuff, whereas in a class like cultural heritage or intellectual freedom, you might. Uh, our differences, some of which are outlined in the university's non-discrimination statement below, will add richness to this learning experience. Please consider that sarcasm and humor can be misconstrued in online interactions. Uh, and again, that's something that I have to keep in mind as well. I am not very funny, honestly, even though I try to be, so it's kind of like... Uh, if I were funny, I would be a comedian instead of doing this, but because I'm not funny, I just, I guess, uh, teach people how to use or teach people how to be librarians, and I try to do so with a somewhat humorous uh, approach, but few people are laughing, if I'm going to be quite honest. Uh, we can build a polite and respectful course ambiance, and I believe that we are going to do that with no problem. Class announcements, the course announcements are my primary method of communicating with y'all. And this is something that is kind of new to my syllabi this semester. But I had a student in a previous uh, course who, um, and don't worry about who or what, because uh, we don't do that. But let me just say I did have a student who uh, they would not read the course announcements and then they got upset because they didn't keep up with the course when they didn't read the announcements. So the announcements are how I communicate with you all. So they are mandatory reading because otherwise you are going to miss things. And no, I have plenty to do. So for anyone who's thinking, well, if I don't read the course announcements, uh, he should just email me anyway um, and let me know what I need to do. No, no. Yeah, you're busy. I know you're busy, but so am I. So no, I am going, you are in grad school and I am going to expect you to act like an adult. And that means that if you are missing things, I am not going to run after you. The course announcements are how I make sure that my students are staying on task. Remember that. All right. Uh, so yes, the course announcements themselves are mandatory reading. However, following optional links or watching optional check-in videos is optional. But again, the text of the course announcements themselves is required. Zoom. Uh, we will not have any required uh, sync sessions in this class. So the Zoom stuff I'm actually going to skip over. Let me grab that textbook. Okay, so I love our textbook. Let me just say I love, love, love our textbook. And some of you may be wondering, hey, why did this very, very small textbook cost me $55 or however much it costs? I know it was like, I know it's not cheap, y'all. I know it's not cheap. Believe me when I tell you, there is a reason why this textbook is so small. And that's because when you get a business question and you are on the spot, you do not want some big ass book where you are trying to find information with somebody in front of you. You need something that you can find that information fast. And as y'all will see, because I know you all bought this textbook and will be reading it as required. I know you're going to do that because you're good students. But you will see as you read this textbook, there are not a lot of words in it, but it gets you to these sources very, very quickly. It says, hey, you want to do this? Try this. And that is why this textbook is beneficial. And yes, I do recommend y'all keep this textbook if you're going to be working in public services. 
even after this course. Um, you may be tempted to sell the textbook, and it, by all means, if you do want to sell the textbook, then by all means, sell it. Times are tough. I get it. But if you can afford to keep this textbook and not try to sell it to get some of your money back, I recommend that you do, because there are few books that are actually going to guide you to information as quickly as this one does. OK, believe me, I've got the um, I've got the first edition of this textbook as well. And I kept it in my office uh, when I was a business librarian at Coastal Carolina. And trust me, I had to refer to it a lot. So keep it, uh, because even if you don't plan to be a business librarian, you're going to get business questions. That's just how it goes. So I recommend keep the textbook and make sure that you are familiar with its content so that when things come up, you are able to answer people's questions. Uh, additional materials um, are going to be readings and videos and things like that. And all of those should be accessible either freely over the web or they will be things that you can um uh, access through the university library. So the textbook is really the only thing that you should be having to pay for. Now, as far as grading scale, if you get at least a 93, you've got a A. If you get at least an 83, you got a B. If you get at least a 73, you got a C. Up to 82 or 92 for the B. Uh, 72 and below, you fail. We do not award the grade of D to a graduate student. <laughs> Uh, the instructor reserves the right to award pluses or minuses to any letter grade with pluses offered for exceptional work within a letter grade and minuses for substandard work within a letter grade. So, yeah, I mean, if I feel that you are just kind of phoning it in and doing just enough to get an A, don't be surprised if you see an A minus on your grade. But usually, usually people are putting enough effort to where they get an A and they earn the A and they just get the A or if you put in that exceptional effort, the A plus, any of that can come. Uh, there is, I don't think there is a such thing as a C minus. If so, definitely try to avoid that. Uh, but yeah, uh, late work policy. I really just had this in here as a cover my ass sort of thing in case people are really abusing my patience or my uh, abusing my, um, yeah, abusing my niceness, I must say. Uh, but yes, for, um, Technically, late work will be automatically lowered by 25% and assignments more than three days late will not be accepted unless prior arrangements have been made. If you have circumstances that affect your ability to complete assignments, please contact me at least three days in advance of the due date. Again, this is me covering my ass. I'm human. Y'all are human. So when things come up, just let me know. I'm more flexible than that uh, language in the syllabus may suggest. So. Um, definitely, of course, if you have a close relative die, an immediate family member, you are entitled to uh, bereavement time for that. Um, but even going beyond what the university says you're entitled to, yes, if you have a friend that dies or a friend that's in the hospital, if your cat or your dog dies, um, whatever the case may be, and you and it happens less than three days, if it happens the day of the due date, just tell me and we'll work something out, okay? Just contact me. Again, I'm human. I know life happens. If you get in a car accident, if you get, I've had a student get arrested before, not here at a previous institution, but I've had a student get arrested before and miss a due date because of that. Um, and it doesn't have to be negative stuff. I know I'm saying all this negative stuff. If you get married one weekend, if you get married on Saturday, I'm not necessarily expecting you to rush back and complete a worksheet on Sunday. So, you know, if you get married or you want to go on a vacation or something like that, um, it, just talk to me. Uh, the worst I can say is no, but usually I say yes when people reach out to me. Now, there are going to be some things that I might say no to if you just tell me you, if you, for instance, like if you tell me you have a hangover, I might not grant you an extension, um, but again, you know, just just work with me and we'll we'll figure out what we've got. OK, um, so that is that. Here are your list of assignments here. So um, and this will get you to a total of 100 points. First of all, the syllabus quiz, which is due on the 19th, this coming Sunday. I see quite a few of you have already done this. That's worth one point. And after doing, after watching this video, you should be ready to jump into the syllabus quiz. Uh, database practice worksheets. There are eight of these, and each one is worth five points for a total of 40 points. And you have a new one each week. Um, sorry, I need to pause for a second. Now, the database um, practice worksheets are going to do something that I don't think we do enough in LIS education. And you all um, obviously have only, probably have only, um, 
gotten any library science education from here at Mizzou. Excuse me. Jeez. All right. So you've all probably um, just started your LIS education. There may be some transfers in here, but for the most part, I'm assuming that all of you are getting all of your library science education here at Mizzou. One recurring problem that happens at pretty much every ALA, uh, ALA accredited institution, I assure you. So if you think that this is something that just happens at Mizzou, you're wrong. And I've been in the field long enough to know this, but a lot of these uh, programs are like overly theoretical and they don't do a lot as far as teaching people about different databases and uh, different library resources and things like that. And so I did not want a theoretical just a totally theoretical class or something like this. I wanted to actually help you all acquire some hard skills, okay? And so that's what these uh, database assignments are for. So again, you have eight of them. Um, I believe six of them deal with proprietary databases. There's one for Yahoo Finance, which is definitely a very useful tool for business librarians. And then there's another one that's just concerned with data overall, that if you bought the textbook, you will see what pages you need to go to in order to find the links for those uh, for that last uh, worksheet. OK, so when you do these worksheets again, it should help you get more comfortable with the database. These are all open book, every single one, even the uh, even the little quiz at the end that is more of a quiz than something that guides you through a database or has you answer questions from a database. Even that one is open book. All of these worksheets are open book. And the reason for that is because what I want you all to do is open a quiz and start it and then also have another tab open. And when you need to, once you see a question, OK, Dr. Jason is asking me this. How do I find this? Uh, have a tab open with the database, but then have a tab open where you can just Google and go to YouTube or wherever and look at a tutorial so that you can just Google, okay, how do I find such and such information in Ibis World? Google it, find the tutorial, look at the tutorial. The tutorial will explain to you how to find that information. And then you use what you uh, just learned, apply it to the worksheet and find out how to answer the question that way. And this is a discovery process. And I assure you when it comes to, well, being a librarian is about discovery. I don't know how to say that any more plainly. It is about discovery. It is about figuring out what is at your disposal and then using whatever information, resources, and other things are at your disposal. Okay. So again, these are all open book and they are all also untimed. I don't give a damn if it takes you five hours to complete one of the worksheets. I'm sure you care, but I'm just saying what I want you to do is learn, learn, learn how to use the database. I am not concerned with how long it takes. If you can answer, if you can complete one of these worksheets in five minutes, great. If it takes you five hours, fine. Okay, but what I want you to do is be more comfortable with the database after you do the worksheet than before you did the worksheet. Uh, <clears throat> Nonprofit summary and reaction assignment, that's going to be worth four points and that's going to be due on April 23rd. We'll come back to that because um, so that I can explain what I mean there. Um, the reaction to the uh, BizLib listserv problem stumper or a stumper in your textbook. Um, this is worth five points. And let me see here. Let me go into the textbook here. I'm going to pause for a second. OK, I'm not sure how well y'all are going to see this, and that's OK. But uh, if you bought the textbook on page 121, you'll see an appendix for stumpers. And so you can either use one of the stumpers that is uh, within the book, or if you, I do recommend that you all subscribe to the BizLib listserv, even if it's just for this semester. And if you do that, then um, you will see stumpers come on the BizLib listserv as well. But you'll have, it'll be faster to find a stumper within your textbook and do that one. But don't do a stumper that one of your classmates already did, because this is going to be a discussion board kind of assignment. Uh, so you all will be able to see what each other wrote. And again, I just recommend that you find a stumper probably in the book, because in um, on the BizLib listserv, they're not actually, the stumpers aren't coming in as frequently as they used to for whatever reason. I don't know why that is. But anyway, you'll probably find one faster in your textbook. It'll be worth five points. And it's technically due on the 9th. However, I am going to extend it to April 11th. These assignments should probably be reversed as far as what order they appear in, but it's what it is. Um, 
on April the 11th is uh, going to be, you're going to have basically a two day grace period. So April the 9th is Easter. So I'm not going to make it due on Easter Sunday, but it'll be due two days. Well, it'll be due on Easter Sunday. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. It's due on Easter Sunday, but there's a two day grace period, meaning that if you turn it in by April 11th, you will not lose any points. And then discussion board is going to be 16 points. Eight weeks of discussion board prompts with one post for an, one point for an original post and one point for a reply to a classmate. This will be expected every week. Uh, your business plan assignment, that is the magnum opus assignment. It's huge. It's going to be 34 points. This is going to be a group assignment. This was an independent assignment um, the first time I taught this course, uh, which was, I believe, summer 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And then what happened was... Uh, yeah, everybody actually did good. Everybody did good on the assignment. But my teaching evaluations, people were like putting a business plan together with something that should have been a group assignment. And I'm thinking to myself, like, y'all don't like group work, though. That's what I always hear. But apparently for this, people want group work. And that is because it is kind of intensive. So um, you are able to you will have your groups and we will talk about that in a second. And you can divvy up the uh, the work for putting your business plan together. We've got four groups that'll be due on May the 12th. And that does also help me out because now I will only be grading four business plans at the end of the semester as opposed to, I believe, 15. I think we've got 15 students in here. So that's good for me too. It is going to save me a lot of time. I won't front that will save me a lot of time, but it should save you a lot of time as well. Assignment submission instructions, please use the submission portal. I will not be accepting your assignments through email. No, no, no. Uh, grading criteria for discussion board posts, I'm not really going to belabor this too much, but yes. Um, I also, again, this is here to cover my ass, but as really as far as having something up by Thursday night and then a response up by Sunday night, I'm not going to hold you all to that very rigorously because life happens, life comes up. Y'all are going to have things happen during the week. You're going to get sick during the week. Your car is going to break down during the week, this, that, or the other. So I'm not going to be expecting you to always have something up by Thursday. But if you fall behind, use your weekend to catch up. Okay, that's how I'm going to say that. I actually don't put the grades in until the Monday after the Sunday that something is due. So as long as you get it in, as long as you do everything by Sunday night, you're going to be fine. But the reason I do ask that you try to get something up that Thursday is because if everybody waits till Sunday to do everything, then there's nothing for people to reply to. And again, you're graded for replying to a classmate as well. All right. So that's how that goes. Um, and then this is what you're going to be graded on. Meaningful and new ideas, 50%. Coherence, 20%. Relevance, 30%. All right, let's go ahead and keep scrolling down. So what to expect from this course? Uh, the course is designed to meet virtually. It is essential that you access this course uh, Monday through Friday for course announcements. Really, it's every day for course announcements. I would say you don't have to access the course every day. But I would say even including weekends, don't go through. Don't allow three days to go by where you're not in the course for some reason, okay? Uh, what the instructor and your peers expect from you by enrolling in this course, you have agreed to uh, weekly discussions by accessing the discussion board uh, two to three times per week. This will uh, require team effort with respect and help for each other as we build a community of learners. We also expect that you will have a foundational understanding of internet terms and functions. All general class correspondence should be submitted to the relevant uh, discussion board, only personal and confidential matters should be directed to the instructor via email. Now, again, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get mad at you if you uh, email something to me that wasn't necessarily personal or confidential. It's OK. It's OK. There's a lot of protect my ass stuff in here. Uh, what you may expect from your instructor, monitor and I will monitor and facilitate class discussions. Uh, I will respond to private questions, usually within 72 hours, Provide, and I will provide timely feedback on written assignments and projects and help build this community of learning. If you do not, if you email me or message me through Canvas and you don't hear from me within 72 hours, email me back because something probably happened in that case. All right, your weekly routine. Every week you are expected to log into the course no fewer than two or three times. Uh, each week the course will have a corresponding instructional unit and you will have videos, readings, etc., etc., a worksheet and discussion board post. You should complete your readings and review 
uh, of course, commentary before posting answers to the discussion board questions in, adi in addition to posting your own original posting in, uh, in discussion questions by the specified date, you must comment and reflect upon your po uh, the postings of your peers by the closing of the grading period, which again will be generally on Sunday nights, okay? Uh, please note that there are readings on academic and uh, or public business librarianship most weeks, and they may seem off topic to the main idea, but this is a condensed course. So basically what I'm saying there is you may have market research as your, uh, as your topic for the week, or you might have company research as your topic for the week. Then you might have stuff that's just readings about public business librarianship or academic lab, uh, business librarianship. And the reason for that is because we have limited time together. So yes, you will see those sorts of readings also sprinkled in uh, into your modules. And that is a way to keep this class at eight weeks because truth be told, I don't have enough content uh, in a business, uh, a business librarianship class to extend the class at 16 weeks. This has to be an eight week course or else you're gonna get very, very bored with the material. Um, let's get into these weeks and what will be expected each week. All right, friends. So let's go through uh, our weeks one by one. Um, I will not go. Uh, I will not do this in the modules. But what I will say is that uh, the syllabus and the module content should line up. Then there are probably going to be mistakes in this course. Excuse me. In fact, uh, some mistakes have already, or a mistake has already been pointed out to me. Thank you for that. Um, but if you see things that don't line up or things that don't make sense, just let me know and I will correct those. There are probably going to be some errors in this course. So I am prepared to hear what you have to say about it. All right. Let's start with what we are doing now, which is March the 13th, uh, our week number one. So the topic here is getting started with business reference as well as an introduction to public library business, uh, public library business librarianship issues and concepts. So the objective here is to lay the groundwork for the rest of the learning in this course. Students will read introductory and overview materials and get a feel for what is coming next in the next few weeks. Uh, students will also get a better feel for the relevance of this course's contents and business librarianship in general through this module. This is a heavier focus on business librarianship in the public library this particular week. So. What you're going to do is you are going to read chapters one, two, and 10 of your uh, textbook. If you've got the second edition, which is the one I wanted you to get, then these chapters correspond. Now, if you've got that first edition, then you're going to have to figure out which uh, you're going to have to figure out what chapter uh, matches the content. So if I'm saying uh, this ref resource, um, if that is not chapter two in the first edition, since you bought the first edition, you're going to have to figure out what chapter is the corresponding chapter because things did get moved around. Um, so you're going to read chapters one, two, and ten this week. You're also going to watch my interview with Kelly Head. He is a public uh, business librarian, and uh, he will. This is a yeah thirty minute video, but this video will introduce you to what it's like being a public librarian, a public business. Uh, librarian and Kelly did a very good job with explaining that and some of the things that he does day to day. This is vocational guidance and it's something that I don't think we do enough in higher ed is just letting y'all know what you're going to do from day to day on your jobs. So this is a class where I felt that was necessary and so I did reach out to Kelly uh, to record this video. I also had a video with a uh, academic business librarian that you will watch later on in the course. Actually, that's a two-parter. All right, and then there are some more uh, readings here. Um, if any of these links are broken or you're not able to access these readings, again, just reach out to me um, and I will assist you with that. So your business source premiere or business source complete uh, worksheet is going to be due this week, as is the syllabus quiz and the uh, week one discussion board post. Next week, and uh, your stuff next week actually isn't due until April the 2nd, because um, after next week, you have spring break. And so I can't make anything due during spring break. This is going to be due after spring break. So April the 2nd is when this stuff will be due. Uh, for week number two, this will be introduction to company, nonprofit, and small business research. Additionally, uh, introduction to academic library business librarianship issues. So the student will begin learning helpful resources for a company, nonprofit, and small business research. Additionally, concepts for 
business librarianship in academic libraries will be introduced through readings and videos in this module. So this that week, next week, you will read chapters three and six of the book, as well as these other assigned readings here. Um, you will also read the Mizzou Company Information Lib Guide, and you will look at the Columbia University Nonprofits Research Lib Guide. You also have two lectures by my predecessor, Chris LeBeau, who also does still teach for the program as a retiree. Um, and then you've got some optional readings here and you will have your emergent worksheet, your uh, and then also your webinar and or summary react to nonprofit video. And again, I will, uh, your reaction to the uh, nonprofit video and I'll explain that in a bit um, in your week two discussion board prompt. Week three is when you are going to do uh, industry research and or learn about industry research. And this includes NAEPS codes, which are very important. If you are going to be going into business librarianship, you're going to want to know your NAEPS codes. And the worksheets that you're working with in this class are going to help you see how important NAEPS codes are and that you understand them. So you've got some things you got to watch that week too. Uh, you're going to read um, chapter four of your book and you are going to watch a very short NAICS codes video. This is only like six minutes long. Um, but then there is an optional video if you have the time. Uh, oh, we actually, you've got another video down here. How long is this one? Oh, 14 minutes. So that one's not that, that one's not very long either. But you do I do mix up readings with videos as well because uh, the videos do help and sometimes they're actually more concise than the readings would be. Now, if you want to optimize your success with NAICS codes, then you will read, uh, you will watch if you want to, it's optional. So you'll have optional resources every week too. Optimizing success with NAICS codes, NAICS codes. This is a 55 minute webinar, very long webinar, but if you watch it, it will help you just that much more with uh, NAICS codes and then financial ratio um, tutorial video. This is also, and this one's long as well, but this is another one that if you do make the time to watch it, it will go a long way for you, but those will be optional in part because they're so long. Um, and then you have activities, your Ibis World uh, spreadsheet, your Stomper Reaction assignment, and your um, your week three discussion board. All right, week number four. That's when we're going to talk about market and consumer research. That'll be from April the 10th until the 16th. Um, so the objective there is uh, market research and consumer research are among the most requested research inquiries that business librarians face. In this module, we will learn about market and consumer research by it's done and the best sources for pulling it off. So uh, you will read chapter seven and you will read uh, these other materials here. You will also, um, and this is uh, this BYU Libraries Market Research Playlist. This is very, very helpful. Um, I know you're, again, having to watch a lot of web content, but trust me, it goes a long way. And then also uh, we've got a two-part uh, interview with an academic business librarian here, uh, actually my former co-worker, Steve Kramer, who is very, 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 very well respected in our field as far as business librarianship. And he, he, is, he is a mastermind. He's one of the best, one of the best business librarians in the country. Show him some respect, put some respect on his name. And again, this is a two parter. I apologize for how long it is, but there's a lot of information that he wants to share. And there's a lot of stuff to consider if you are going to possibly go into academic business librarianship. But I will say, if you become an academic business librarian, trust me, that is job security. That is job security because that is a skill set that not a lot of people have, not a lot of people want to learn. And not a lot of people are comfortable with learning. So if you are willing to put the time and effort in, you should have a job for the rest of your career. Even if you get fired or laid off from your academic business librarian job at one college, they have announcements for those all the time. and You'll get picked up somewhere else, I assure you. Uh, Chris also has a marketing lecture that week, and then we've got some optional things. You'll do your week four discussion board and your mental worksheet that week. The fifth week, uh, data and statistics are always going to be requested of uh, business librarians. This type of information will also be requested outside of the, uh, the norms of typical consumer data and stats or company uh, industry data and stats. The readings in this module will acquaint students with helpful data and statistics sources and will also contextualize what patrons may seek data and what data sets they may actually seek. 
So you're going to read chapter eight that week as well as these other materials here. Um, and then you've got some optional materials down there that you they still may be very helpful to what you're trying to learn. And then the activities are the data and statistics worksheet and the week uh, discussion board prompt. Week number six, April 24th through 30th, is when we'll talk about investment and stock information. And this is something that's very, very popular too, especially in public libraries. People do want help with investment and with stocks, and they want it, um, uh, you know, the people who can afford to pay it, to pay for it, might hire a stockbroker and that sort of thing. But then there are going to be some people who are just kind of dabbling in it and they don't have the resources to actually pay for it yet. And so those are going to be the people that come to the library, uh, especially with investment. They may just want to come into the library, learn how to use Morningstar or one of these types of resources in order to learn a little bit about investment in stocks. Um, so many public libraries offer a variety of resources and support for investors. So you're going to need to have some grounding in this, too, even if you're headed for academic library and land, students of finance will often desire some help uh, in the form of resources related to investment in stocks. Luckily, we have a chapter covering this in our textbook as well as additional readings. So you're going to read chapter five. You're also uh, Johnson County, Kansas has a really good investment center. You're going to read those materials there. They're PDFs. They are free to read and very, very helpful. You're going to also uh, watch a tutorial on how to use Yahoo Finance and you will have a worksheet about Yahoo Finance. So this tutorial is very helpful. Nicola, Nicola down, down 15%. 15%. Lulu Lemon. You're going to learn a lot from that. And then also you do have an optional thing here that you don't necessarily have to watch, but you'll have a Yahoo Finance worksheet in your week six discussion board prompt. Week number seven, and let me explain what's going on here, because uh, this is a little weird. So week number seven, you're, you actually don't have a formalized topic, really. What you're going to do in week number seven, which is May 1st through 7th, that first week of May, you are going to use this time. You do have a worksheet to do and you do have a discussion board prompt. Your worksheet is going to be net advantage. I hate using net advantage. I think that uh, that database sucks. Honestly, I just think that it's designed very poorly and it's not very intuitive. Um, but that's why you get it on a week where you have lighter content, right? But you're going to use week seven. You should actually be communicating with your groups about your business plan throughout the course. But week number seven is when you're really going to have the time to say, okay, let's divvy these things up. Let's do this, this, and that. Or if you've been working ahead all along, then uh, week seven is just when you can put finalized touches on something or whatever the case may be. But either way, um, this is your week to just kind of I don't know, it's your, your week to kind of regroup and make sure that you're ready to turn that business plan in on May the 12th, okay? Now, again, you do have some things to read. You've got a few things to read here, um, one being a, uh, these are actually some business plan resources, by the way. So even the reading in this case does support what you're learning. However, I would, uh, as y'all saw in the announce in one of the announcements, and I will go back over this announcement really quick in a few minutes. But what you'll see from the announcement also is that um, I am encouraging you. You can look at these early if you want to get that head start and get good and going. But I am encouraging you if you work somewhere that has a business librarian to use, utilize your business librarian. OK, and that will go a long way. Optional Forte and Oppenheim, um, the basic business library core resources and services from 2012. That's not something that you have to watch and then or have to read. And then finally, that last week, week number eight, we will have tax research. So tax stuff is actually one of the ALA competencies for um, business librarians as well. But I don't really like the fact that it is because most libraries actually do not allow you to give tax advice to your patrons. Uh, there are liability issues with that. Legal advice and tax advice are two things that most libraries do shy away from allowing their librarians to give uh, any specific type of, um, of or to answer questions or give advice to uh, about, I should say. So yes, um, it is listed as a competency. So we do have our a module about it, but it's going to be our last module. Um, now you're going to have a few uh, readings and things to watch here. But what you're going to have, the big thing that you're going to have is an activity that, again, I made an announcement about, and you might want to start on this early. Complete the basic student certification course module from here. So 
We're gonna go here and this will link you right to the basic course. This is the shortest of the uh, of the courses that they have through IRS. I picked the one that was the shortest and will give you the basic uh, information and knowledge, but you will need to complete these various uh, modules and get through it. But it's freely accessible, you know, and I really just want you all to have familiarity with what's going on here, okay? I'm not asking you to actually turn in anything. Um, so, you know, this is to build your basic competencies, but right now you're kind of on your honor. I'm going to just assume and trust that you finished this, um, but I'm not actually going to require you to turn in like, uh, like some professors might require you to turn in like your certificate of completion or something. I'm not gonna make you do all that, okay? But yeah, complete it and you may want to start working on that early if you are worried about the time it's gonna take. Um, other things that are going on, we've already talked that I've got that help desk stuff in there twice. That's how important it is in the syllabus. Um, COVID-19, we are completely online, so that shouldn't be an issue. Academic integrity, you can read this on your own, but don't cheat. That's basically what that comes down to. Don't plagiarize as well. Academic inquiry, uh, course discussion and privacy. You are entitled to privacy. I can't just air out what you're doing. Uh, FERPA is what entitles you to that privacy. Read that on your own time as well. Um, intellectual pluralism, I'm not even going to go there. Mental health, though, I am going to go there. Folks, do not suffer in silence. If there's something going on, please reach out to somebody and then also let me know if you are having some difficulties and if I need to be a little accommodating with you while you're getting through your struggles. I understand mental health struggles, okay? I don't necessarily understand every mental health struggle. I don't, I, I haven't been diagnosed with everything. I've been diagnosed with uh, severe depression, generalized anxiety disorder, and um, ADHD. But um, some people have like other more serious things such as like bipolarism or um, various other ailments, whatever you might be struggling with, please, please let me know. Well, you don't need to let me know what you're struggling with. Let me let me apologize there. You can if you want to, but you don't have to, but let somebody know. And if you need accommodations, um, then accommodations can be made, but seek well-being, seek some help if you need it, okay? And tell me if you need some help, uh, tell me if you need some accommodations because you're seeking help, all of those things. Um, it's real out there, folks. So I know people are going through it and I don't want you, this class is not something that you should be having to worry about if you're having thoughts of taking your own life or if you're having thoughts of hurting or killing somebody else or any of these things. And I've dealt with students who have had these situations go on. Don't suffer, don't harm yourself, don't harm anybody else, okay? Get some help. All right, religious holidays and accommodations. As I've already said, we've got an extension, a two-day grace period due to Easter. But if you have other religious things going on, and I'm not a Christian, actually. I'm a Noahide. If you don't know what a Noahide is, you can Google that. But if you've got Jewish holidays that you uh, observe or uh, Islamic holidays or uh, holidays for any religion or faith system that isn't um, Abrahamic, whatever the case may be, you know, it's what it is, you know. Um, let me know that you need extra time because, hey, it's, uh, you know, it, because of a religious holiday or something and you have to abide by your faith. I am required to accommodate you uh, if you have a religious issue. Non-discrimination policy, I cannot discriminate against you based on uh, your race, color, national origin, ancestry, religion, uh, gender, pregnancy, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, age, disability, protected veteran status, or any so such uh, statuses such as that. Um, if we need to get Title IX involved in anything, I am a mandated reporter and I will do so. But, um, you know, again, but please also know that I'm a mandated reporter. So, yes, um, there are certain things that if you tell me about them, I am forced to tell somebody else that you told me about them. Uh, but I don't want that to be a deterrent to you telling me, okay? We want to make sure that you all are safe and well. Um, if you need to reach out to Title IX, especially if you feel like you've been sexually harassed or discriminated against by me, I shouldn't and I hopefully won't do that, but who knows what's going on with uh, interpretations really. Um, if you do need to report me or somebody else to Title IX, these are the resources to do it. But I'm hoping that there will never be a case for you. Definitely not a case where you got to uh, report me. I'm hoping you won't have to report 
anyone else in the program or anyone else anywhere as well. But if you do, this is where you go to do it. Um, if you have a disability, students with disabilities can reach out to the Disability Center uh, if you need to create an accommodation plan that can happen there. And then I'll get a message about your accommodations that you need and I will accommodate you accordingly. So that is how we go there. And uh, that's a little course summary. I'm not gonna go through that. I am going to talk about, and I'm, I know that this video is long, but course overview videos are always long because courses are involved. Um, let's go back up to announcements. Okay, and actually we do need to talk about the announcements that we've had in the course so far. So, um, for one thing, you do have your business plan groups, and uh, so this announcement will tell you who your teammates are. You are welcome to use the directory to reach out to your teammates, or you can also go to the, let me actually put this in student view to show you what I'm about to do. Um, you can actually go to, to, to the people tab to see who your partners are. So if you go to groups, and then um, you will see the names of your teammates within your group page. But if you go into your group page, you can actually go in and communicate with each other through there as well. So I'm out of student view now, and I'm just going to kind of go in. Um, well, actually, I can't even go in as the instructor. But these uh, these group pages do allow you all to communicate with one another. Ooh, it looks like I've got I've already had one student drop. It looks like I've had another student drop, so that's unfortunate. Uh, I had 16. It looks like now I've got 14, but I hope everybody else is going to stay in. Um, I'll have to see who else dropped. But anyway, so those are your group assignments there. And we'll go back to our announcements here and some other things that we need to be aware of. Uh, welcome to your business reference class. So this is our welcome. Uh, you can actually start gathering uh, resources for your business plans right now. So go ahead and start doing that. Um, you can look at the module for the final week and start on that, what I was just talking about, that basic student certification path from the IRS. You want to start on that early so that it doesn't hit you as busy uh, as something to keep you busy at the end of the semester. Uh, go By all means, go ahead and start on that now. Okay. Uh, other announcements that we have. Okay, um, I'm not going to do the free uh, webinar thing. We don't need to look at that. But again, the uh, the worksheets are untimed. Don't worry about that. Uh, business Source Premiere and Business Source Complete are the same thing. And then we have a little correction there. So let's go ahead and look at the assignments real quick that are coming up. So again, you have these uh, these worksheets. You have a worksheet each week. They are untimed. Um, just again, keep a tab open with the worksheet, keep a tab open with, um, with, uh, Google and so that you can Google and look for information and plug that information in as needed. And then also keep a tab open for the database. You should probably have at least three tabs open. Um, you do have, again, you have, uh, eight, uh, basically eight, uh, discussion board prompts here that fall under this. I don't know why they are being grouped as imported assignments, I guess just because uh, I did have to partially impart, import this class from a previous course shell. Um, but anyway, this is where your various uh, discussion board prompts are, but you can also go to the discussion boards tab here to find that information and to complete your discussion boards. Okay. Oh, and it looks like we've got a lot of activity already actually in the discussions. Um, but yes, yeah, so every week you're going to have one of those worksheets. And then also the uh, specialized assignments include summarizing and reacting to your nonprofit worksheet video. Um, so this will there's a little crew rubric for how you're going to be graded here. But each of you are going to have one of these uh, one of these um, uh, videos assigned to you and basically what you're going to do is watch the video and summarize it as a discussion board post and you're going to uh, and then your uh, your classmates will be able to read what you wrote and everything and learn a bit about uh, nonprofit information and nonprofit work through what you've got going on there and then also we have another assignment that manifests as a discussion and again that's going to be your stomper so uh, it'll be here and it's going to be again due April the 9th. Just find one of your stompers 
and go ahead and uh, answer the questions in the prompt related to this number. Uh, the final assignment, that's what I want to just kind of talk about really quickly here now, but we'll talk about this a little more um, at another time because I know that this uh, this here video is kind of getting a little long. Again, you have uh, you're in groups of three or four, and I hope that nobody else drops. Um, if nobody else drops, then we have two groups of three and two groups of four. And so what you're going to do is you and your group are actually going to put together a business plan based on this prompt, okay? Um, so you've got a imaginary uh, scenario here. And what you're going to do, and there's no page limit, but uh, quality of research, organization, and written expression. Uh, these are the rubrics. Uh, these are the um, criteria upon which you'll be graded for the rubric demonstrating knowledge of a variety of relevant resources, meeting a patron's uh, information needs, and uh, valuable use of charts, tables, graphs, and so forth. But you'll have a more detailed rubric here. But essentially, so really what you're probably going to want to do is just uh, follow the um, the report blueprint here. You don't This is a suggested format, but you don't have to follow it religiously. But this is probably the easiest way to compile all your information and present it. And again, uh, the reason why you all are in groups is so that you can kind of divvy this up. And really, as you go through the course, these various things are going to make more sense. And again, you can also use business librarians if they are at your disposal. That includes if you have a business librarian at your place of work, you can utilize them. If you have a business librarian at your local public library, you can utilize them. And you can utilize your, uh, if you, these are optional. It's optional to utilize your librarian, but it's certainly not against the rules. And uh, then if you want to, you can even consult with uh, whoever is doing business librarianship for Mizzou. So that is pretty much how that works. Um, that is really just about it. That is the overview as it needs to be explained. Um, other things that I just want to say really quickly, though, and again, I hope that nobody else drops out. Uh, I hate that I've already lost two students. Um, this really isn't a challenging class. Um, you all are going to do fine in it. But uh, if you do need a drop, I certainly understand things come up. But I just want you all to be comfortable to realize that if you complete this course, you will have a brand new skill set that you didn't previously have. You will also be, uh, this course is also something that a lot of people do as professional development after they become librarians and then they end up having to pay for this professional development. And the, I believe the course if you take it um, as a professional development course uh, through ALA, I believe it's like, I mean, it's a few hundred dollars. It's not cheap. And if you don't have professional development funds that you can use, then you're paying for that out of pocket. So I really am hoping that you all are appreciating the ability to learn these skills at the student level, um, because not everybody gets that opportunity to do that either. All right, so um, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, again, I am, people, I am gonna say this, and this is a spiel that some of you have probably heard from me before as well, if you've had me in other classes, but people act like they're very intimidated by me for some reason, and there's really no need to be. Um, I am, yes, I am expecting quality work from you all, but I do realize that you all are students and I'm not going to treat you all as if you are professionals who have been doing this for five, 10, or 15 years. I'm gonna treat you all as students. This is a learning opportunity. This is a safe environment. This is an environment for you all to grow. And, you know, don't be, uh, I'll just keep it real since uh, when you're dealing with people in the Midwest, things are a little different from where I'm from in the South. I'm from North Carolina originally, and things are a lot different down there. But I would say, please don't be intimidated by having a teacher who is a, a person of color. Please do not be intimidated by having a male teacher and so forth and so on. Um, I am here for your success. That is what I want you all to know. And I do think that the remaining people in this class are going to be very successful. Um, and I want to see that success because I enjoy seeing my students be successful. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, that is pretty much what we need to do, what we need to discuss this week. And the rest of the check-in videos are going to be shorter than this. I am Dr. Jace, and you can see that I'm tired from my face. So I am going to go ahead and publish this video, and then I am going to go to bed because it's almost midnight here. Take care, and I'll see you next week.